Welcome to another BJC Pass Paper Review. Today we're going to review a health science paper. And this science paper is a paper one, which is multiple choice. And it was from the year 2019. We first start this examination. Always remember, write your school number, write a candidate number, write your initials and your surname. Now let's jump into the first question, but also remember to read through the instructions carefully and ask any question before the examination starts. So the first question reads, what do we call the smallest unit of life? And this is called the cell. And remember that cell will make up tissues and tissues will make up organs and then organs together will make up system and then system will eventually work together to make up an organism. All right, so part two, question number two. I said, which organ protects and prevents bacteria from entering the body? And this answer is the skin. Point to note right here. The blood, however, will not protect us once the bacteria get inside of us. But from entering, it is the skin is preventing that. All right, great. And please remember that the blood contains two cells, which are white blood cells, phagocytes and lymphocytes that will fight off bacteria. Phagocyte will engulf, while the, while the lymphocyte will produce antibodies. All right, let's go to question number three. Which body system is located only in the abdominal cavity? And if you think about the circulatory system, it's all over the body. The digestive system runs from the mouth to the anus, so that cannot be an radius only, the key radius only. And so it said that the endocrine system, the endocrine system is all over the body as well. And so here's the urinary system is the correct answer. All right, so going to question number four. Let's go on a little bit. So question number four is so which one shows the internal structures of the body and is similar to x-rays? And so right here, it is ultrasound. All right. Um, the others, they are instrument used in the laboratory that the stethoscope can use to test um, your pulse rate, your heartbeat. Syringe is used to take up um, liquid by suction. Thermometer used to measure temperature. All right, so number five is say a, gym, uh, a gymnast falls from a balance beam, hurts her neck, and becomes paralyzed. So if the gymnast fell, now it said which system she damaged because she become what? Paralyzed. So in other words, she was not able to move a part of her body. And so therefore, it will be the nervous system that is being damaged, all right? Which means that the message will not be able to send to the muscle, so the muscle will not be able to carry out certain actions or movement. Question number six. Which characteristics of living things enable a baby to develop inside its mother's womb? And so in terms of development, there's some growth taking place, and for growth to take place, the nutrients must be what? Absorbed. Okay, so definitely D is the answer. Excretion and respond, not this, no, definitely not. All right, growth and sensitivity because um, sensitivity is also about response. Movement and respiration, no. All right, but of course, respiration is good because respiration will produce energy that is needed for growth as well. But the best answer there is D. Now, question number seven, it asks how many bones are found in, in the adult human skeleton and that is 206, all right? And remember that a baby will have much more bones, which would be 300 bones inside of them. All right, so they could make a note of that. All right, so great. Now, question number eight. They said, which structure in the body are made of cartilage? And so they said the air, which is good, but the eye, no. Fingernail and tongue, no. Nose and trachea, yes, indeed. All right, because the trachea is made up of rings of cartilage that will prevent it from collapsing whenever you're swallowing food. All right, and the nose is definitely cartilage. Question number nine. For question number nine, it said, which body cavity is found in the skull? And you think about it, is the cranial um, cavity, all right? And so because this, the skull is also known as the what? Cranium, okay? 
All right, it's a great number 10. Is a which branch of science deals with ways of keeping the body and the environment clean. And this is definitely not anatomy, not biology, but hygiene. Hygiene deals with the cleansiness. And that's something that we have to practice every single day of our lives. All right, question number 11. It said the diagram below represents a typical animal cell. And so for this typical animal cell, let me quickly um, give you the labelings here. So um, R is the cell membrane. So let's call R the cell membrane here. Right, let's put that in blue. All right, so this is the cell membrane. Okay. And Q is the cytoplasm. So I'm, I'm going to type it right here. So Q is the cytoplasm. And P is the nucleus that is found in the center of the cell. All right, so those are the three um, parts that is shown on this cell structure right here. All right, so great. Let's strip this over a little bit. Right there. Perfect. All right, great. Now, no, let's now jump to the next part of the question here, or the next question. Matter of fact, this question is not answered yet, so I'll answer it real quick. It says, which row on the table gives the correct name of for each part of the cell? And so again, we start with P. P is a nucleus. And so C definitely. Q is the cytoplasm, yes. And then R is the cell membrane. So definitely option C is the correct answer here. All right, let's go to question number 12. In question number 12, it says, which food nutrient listed below is not digested, but is needed to keep the body healthy? And so carbohydrates, we digest carbohydrates, we digest fats, we digest proteins, we take in water. But the key word here said not digested. What digestion means is to break down. We do not break down water any further. We just absorb the water that we need, right? So again, we break down carbohydrates, we break down fats, we break down proteins. And remember that we break down carbohydrates into glucose, we break down fats into fatty acids and glycerol, and we break down proteins into amino acids. So the answer here is water, because water is directly absorbed and without being broken down. And remember, the word digestion means to break down, okay? All right, so question number 13. It's a diagram represents the four food groups. It's a which food belong to the milk and dairy food group and so definitely is cheese because cheese is a dairy product as well all right so let's go um cabbage will be from the vegetables um pork will be from the meat right and proteins and the wheat bread was from uh, carbohydrates all right all right so let's go to number 14 and for question number 14 so what is the difference in the total number of temporary teeth and the total number of permanent teeth in a human and so first and foremost you must remember that the temporary teeth that mean you call them the milk teeth as well right so the milk teeth there are only 20 of them but for the permanent teeth we have 32 okay so the difference between 32 and 20 is 12 okay so the difference between those will be 12 all right great number 15 i'm trying to go a little bit fast to make sure we get as much review in Number 15, is a which structure does a dentist remove from a tooth during a root canal to make it less sensitive? So if you think about the enamel, if you take away the enamel, then the teeth will be weak, all right, and everything could go inside of the tooth itself and will even cause more decay. And the dentine, which is a pulp area, can take out all the pulp area. So what they want to take out is a nerve, and to remove the nerve, the root cannot be taken out because the teeth will fall right out, right? So therefore, the nerve is the correct answer because nerves is what will cause us to respond to um, stimuli. And so if you eat something that is cold or something cold in the mouth or too hot in the mouth, then the nerve endings will pick them up and then you will react to them in terms of pain. All right, so moving the nerves will be great for that um, question. So quest this question now, it says, diagram shows a lady with a swelling in her neck. Use the diagram to answer question 16 and 17. So for question number 16, right, let's talk about question number 16. It says, name the deficiency disease shown in the diagram. And so the swelling on the neck is called goiter. So the disease is goiter. Which gland in the neck is enlarged, and this is a thyroid gland, just to make a note of that. 
All right, you remember the adrenal gland there found on top of the kidneys, right? And remember the pituitary gland is found attached to the brain and the salivary gland is in the mouth. So definitely by virtue of where these are located, you know, the thyroid gland is in the neck. All right, number 18, it said, in which structure of the respiratory system are the vocal cords, um, co vocal cords found? And the vocal cord is found in the voice box, otherwise called a larynx. The pharynx is the throat, okay? The pharynx is the throat, and the epiglottis will be that flap of layer or membrane that will prevent um, food from going inside of a trachea. And definitely lungs is all the way down the thoracic cavity. So um, definitely not. All right. So number 19 is a which shows the correct flow of air in the respiratory system. And first and foremost, we take in air through our nasal um, passage or nasal cavity. The thing that comes next is the trachea. Okay, so with, uh, by virtue, you know that B and C are out because the thing that comes after nasal cavity must be the trachea. The trachea then will leave into the bronchi. One is called a bronchus, all right, and then it goes into alveoli. The alveoli must be the last thing. And a point to note about the alveoli, the alveoli is those um, sac found at the end of the bronchioles where gaseous exchange takes place. In other words, Oxygen will leave from the blood and go into the alveoli and we will exhale um, the carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide leaves from the blood into the alveoli and then we exhale carbon dioxide. Oxygen now will leave from the alveoli and go into the blood and then we'll travel around the body and we will, and we will use the oxygen in our cells to carry out respiration. All right, that's a point to note right there. Question number 20 and we're halfway there. It said the pie chart represents the relative percentage of gases in air. All right, and so we have A, B, C, and D gas. Um, but let's see what's happening in the question here. It said, which process during breathing does the percentage of gases shown in the diagram represent? Now, there are two clues right here that we can know. We can't use 78 because 78 represents nitrogen, okay? Now, there are two things that we're sure about. We're sure about B and we're sure about D which B is carbon dioxide, all right? And carbon dioxide, once it's less than 4%, because coming out, it will be 4%, 4, will be 4 and 20 or 21 will be oxygen. If it's less than 20, which is about 16 thereabout, then you know it is going to be exhaled. So this amount of air that is present based on this pie chart must be inhalation. Okay, so answer here is inhale air, right? Inhalation is the correct answer. Again, by virtue of the carbon dioxide number is way lower than 4%. And oxygen, which is 20 to 21%, that is shown right there for the inhaler. 1.97 will be other gases, okay? Remember, we do not use um, nitrogen. So 78 represents nitrogen. What goes in is the same thing that comes out, all right? Question number 21. It said, in the table below, which row gives the correct information about blood components. And so let's go to A. It said red blood cell or red, red corpuscle engulf and destroy germs. That, not, that is not true. What does this is phagocyte. Phagocyte will engulf and destroy germs. White corpuscles, which mean white blood cells, right? They transport oxygen. Not true. White blood cells will protect our body from diseases, right? So not true. Platelets form the formation of blood clot. Definitely that is correct. So platelets is responsible for blood clotting. Plasma contain hemoglobin. Not true. Red blood cells, they contain hemoglobin. All right, so let's go to our next question. Question number 22. It said the diagram represents a section of the human heart. All right, and so we have some labelings here. I could just quickly label them for you real quick. All right, and so if you notice the top chamber... And what I wanted to notice as well, right, if you're going to label this heart, hold your right hand up and your right hand become the left side of the diagram, right? And so your left hand becomes the right side of the diagram. So here now, if you put where P is, that is facing your right hand. So therefore, this is the left side of the heart, okay? So this is the left. Um, and the upper chambers are called atria. So this is the left atrium, okay? All right, so great. 
And so Q now is on the right side. So this will be the right atrium. Okay. All right. And then R again is on the right side of your hand. So that will be the left ventricle. The lower chambers are called ventricle. This is the left ventricle. And then S again is on the left side of your hand, facing your left hand. So that is the right ventricle all right so great and then now it said which chamber of the heart pumps blood from the heart to the lungs uh, let me show you something real quick all right for you to notice how blood circulate i must say this like have it's so going to be a v l a v and b so this is called avlav b now what a represent is atrium and what L represents is the lungs, V represents the ventricle, and B represents the body. So coming from your body, blood will flow into this atrium. So the atrium always receives blood. So again, this will be your right side over here, and this side will be your left side of the heart, okay? So there's a point that out real quick. We have the right side, and we also have the left side. All right, let me just erase this, put it back a little bit better. All right, so again, on this side, we have the right side, and over here, we have the left side, opposite of your hand. So, therefore, blood comes from the body into the right atrium, then leave the right atrium into the right ventricle, then from the right ventricle into the lungs, and from the lungs, it goes into the left atrium, then the left ventricle, then from the left ventricle into the body. And that's how blood keeps circulating throughout the entire body. So, you can use Avlav B to answer almost any circulatory system um questions so again the question at the bottom here i'm sure you're going to use this now to answer this question so i said which chamber of the heart pumps blood from the heart to the lungs so from the heart to the lungs notice this right ventricle so r for right right ventricle then it goes to the lungs yeah so you can look for the right ventricle which is s so s is the correct answer and so S is represented by option D. Okay, great. All right, so again, use the Avlov B to answer your circulatory system questions. You cannot miss. All right, now question number 23. It said, why do hospitals ask people to donate blood? All right, and the first option say, blood is often, a, is often needed for surgeries and operation. That sounds good. Let's go to part B or option B. Doctors need to make monthly deposit at the, blo at the bo blood bank. Not necessarily true. Not true at all. C, hospitals want to examine blood to see if it is healthy. No. Um, D, is a people usually have more blood than they need in their body. Not true. So A is the correct answer right there. All right, so for question number 24, all right, and for question number 24, it says, diagram shows the human eye seen in the, in, from the front. It says, which label part gives the eye its color, and that will be the iris. And so the iris gives color. So just to make a note right here, this part is called a sclera. These are the parts that you must know um, for even other examination. Okay, so this is the sclera. And then R is the pupil. And then we have S, which is the iris. So S is the iris. And of course, that is our answer we're looking for. So the colored part of that is called the iris. And so S is the iris. So D is our correct answer here. Now let's go to the next question. For question number 25, so which term describe a quick movement of the eyelid and lashes? So when you move the eyelid really quick and your lashes, you actually blink. So it's called blinking. For 26, it says sometimes an infection of the air can cause a person to feel dizzy and lose their balance, which part of the air is infected. And so remember the part of the air that is responsible for balance and coordination is a semicircular canal. So this part is what part is affected. All right. So next question, question number 27. It said uh, the diagram shows a portion of the human air. What is the name of the part shown? And this is the old part of the ear right here. This is a piece that you can hold on to. And that is called a pinna. So let's look if we have a pinna in the answer. Yep. And option D is the pinna. All right. Other parts are internal parts of the ear. So you cannot um, 
touch those, but this is outside part. So it's called a pinna. All right, 28. It says, diagram shows the human brain. And it says, which letter points to the medulla oblongata. So let me, let me quick label them for you real quick. And so the largest part of the brain is called the cerebrum. And then we have the cerebellum, which is at the back of it. All right. So the cerebellum. And then we have the medulla oblongata. All right. So the medulla oblongata. And then um, we have this piece right here, which is called the spinal cord. So this is the spinal cord right here. All right. All right. Great. And so those are the four labelings that they are shown right here. But they ask which part is the medulla oblongata. So that is B, option C. So option C is the correct answer right there. All right. So let's go to question number 29. It said, which is a function of the brain? And it said to prevent germs from entering the body. When we will talk about that. That's the skin. To control the movement of muscles. That is a possible answer right there. To produce hormones. Now, this is a little bit of a tricky one is to produce hormones. Hormones are produced by the brain itself. But there's a, there, there are structures that attach the brain that produce, uh, that produce hormones, such as the pituitary gland, right? All right, so um, definitely C is not the answer because the brain itself is not producing the hormones. Now, these are transport materials around the body. Absolutely not. So, therefore, uh, option B is our best answer because we, if we want to walk, we decided by thinking about it, using our brain to talk, to run, to, to dance, and all the fun stuff that they like to do, playing around and all that. Yeah, you use a brain to decide which muscle to use to do your um, action. Now, question number 30. The, diagrams, the diagram shows the urinary system. And so we have X, which is the kidney. And then from the kidney, we have the ureter. And then from the ureter, we have the urinary bladder. And then we have the urethra. Okay. So the kidney. So this is a kidney. Then ureter. Then our urinary bladder. And then the last piece here, which, which will be our urethra. All right. But let's see what they asking about this question. He said, um, which organ is labeled X and what is its function? So we established that X is a kidney. So therefore, A and B are the only option you can choose from. C and D will be totally wrong. All right. And then the function of it. Let's look at option A. Say it is it filter blood, which is true, to store urine. No, not to store urine. The kidney is not the objective of storing is to get rid of urea. So by producing urine. So it is the kidney and it's in it and it filters blood to produce urine. So this is now the correct answer. B is better than A because the objective is not to store urine, it's to get rid of urea by producing urine. All right, so question number 31. It's a, a beef burger, right, has 1,197 calories, and a veggie burger has 983 calories. If James eats two beef burgers and Julia eats two veggie burgers, how many more calories Julia um, will, will James have eaten? Okay, how many calories will James have eaten? So let's do a quick calculation right here. And so let's work out James quickly because James is eating the, yeah, James eating the beef burger. So we're going to say James eat two of that. It's so going to be two multiplied by 1,197. And that will give us their um, 2,394. Now for Julia, Julia eats two as well, but she eating two veggie burgers. So the veggie burgers only contain 983 um, calories. And so, therefore, our calories here will be 1,966, uh, yep. And then we'll minus these two numbers now. So, the difference between these two numbers will be the, the minus the 1,966. From that, we'll give you 428, okay? So, the difference there is, is 428. So, the difference between these two numbers is 400 and what? 28. So, therefore, B is our correct answer. All right, excellent. Now, let's jump to the next uh, question, question number 32. It said, excessive drinking, drinking of alcohol would most likely damage which organ in the human body? And this will be the liver because the liver detoxifies the body 
and break, for example, alcohol. Alcohol could be toxic to the body, could be poisonous to the body. So the liver will work extra to make sure that you, you, you break down the alcohol to something that is less harmless. So therefore, drinking a lot of alcohol could definitely damage the liver because the liver will overwork, okay? All right, so great. 33, but question number 33, it said, when, when sewing a button on your blouse, you accidentally stick your finger with the needle. What do we call the sudden response of pulling your finger away? And this is a reflex action. And again, let me point this out. For reflex action, for reflex actions, you do not use your brain. The, the, the impulse will only go from the sense organ, which is the skin, go all the way to the spinal cord, and then back to the muscles in that part of your body, and you'll cause movement. So there's no brain involvement in reflex action. So the word you use for reflex action, it is an immediate response. Okay, it is different from involuntary because involuntary is automatic. So the two words here, automatic is for involuntary actions, but for reflex action, you're going to use the word immediate response. Okay, all right, just for you to make a note of that. Now for question number 34, it said, diagram shows the human skin, right? And here it said, now what is the name of the part label X and what is its function? And so X is attached to the hair, and so therefore it is a oil gland, otherwise called the sebaceous gland. All right, so let's look for our sebaceous gland or oil gland. So D will be our, our correct answer because X is the sebaceous gland, otherwise called the oil gland. It makes oil, and the name for that oil is called sebum. So I'll make sure make a note of that. So the oil that is produced is called sebum, okay? Sebum. All right. So sebum is the oil that is formed from the sebaceous gland. All right. I know this word sebaceous, sebum. All right. Question number 35. It said, which are the symptoms of the flu, which is the influenza? All right. So once you have the flu, then what would normally happen? You have bleeding gums and teeth? No, that's, that's describing scurvy. B, itchy skin and pimples. That normally uh, may represent a symptoms of eczema. Sore throat and sneezing. Absolutely, yep, you may have that symptoms. Um, those symptoms. Swelling and cramping that sound like uh, um, arthritis. All right, so question number 36. It said a diagram shows a specialized human body cell, which is a sperm cell here. It said how many chromosomes are found in this cell? Now, remember that the human body cells will have 46 chromosomes, right? So there are 46 chromosomes in all body cells except the gametes or the sex cells. So therefore, in this gametes or the sex cell is half that amount, which should be, um, sorry, this is supposed to be 46. There are 46 um, chromosomes in regular body cells. All right, 46. And so half that amount will be in the sperm cell. You have 23. Okay, so 23 chromosomes are found in gametes, whether it be sperms or egg. Don't really matter, right? So 23, so B will be your correct answer. Now, question number 37. All right, so this now, um, Jamiko and Jackie are, identify, are identical twins. What happens during conception? So during conception, if they're identical twins, it, therefore they must come from the same egg. So one sperm cell, one egg cell, then after fertilization, then they will divide, and that's where you get identical twins. If it is fraternal twins, then it's going to be two different eggs, two different sperms. So if they're identical twins, they must, they must um, both develop from the same zygote, which means the, the cell that is formed after fertilization. So option A is our correct answer. Um, option B, each develop from a separate zygote, absolutely not. That's fraternal. They, they each are conceived at different times. That even makes matters worse. All right? not, not a true answer at all. Um, they both were born with different chromosomes. Uh, no. Okay. So stick with A. A is the answer. All right? 38. In question number 38, is the diagram shows the human female reproductive system. And so we have some parts here. Let me just quickly give you the names of these parts before I go any further. So A, I'm going to put it on top right here. This is called the fallopian tube. 
So it's called the fallopian tube, otherwise called um, the oviduct as well. So you can also call it oviduct, fallopian tube or oviduct. B is the ovary. Okay, B is the ovary. And C is the uterus. I'm going to leave it right here. So it is a uterus. All right. And then D, which is the vagina. So I'm going to say vagina right here. All right, so great. So those are the parts, right? Um, but the question says which structure is a ductless gland. A ductless gland means it produces um, hormones. And so the ovary produces hormones, progesterone and estrogen. So B is our correct answer. All right, so ductless glands are glands that produce what? Hormones. All right, question number 39. It says which process occurs in the oviduct, which is the same thing as fallopian tube, of the female reproductive system when a sperm cell unites with an egg cell. And so they're even telling that they're uniting egg and sperm cell. So once they unite, we know that is fertilization. Okay? So fertilization is the correct answer. Implantation is when the fertilized egg will be attached to the walls of the uterus. Okay? All right? And infertility is when it, you're unable to conceive or produce um, children. All right, and insemination, which is an artificial means, is when the sperm is used by syringe or other equipment by the doctor and deposit the sperm inside the female. That is insemination. All right, so last question. Last question of the day. Well, not today, but for this paper. All right, it's a, which disease affects the skin with itchy blisters and lasts for a few days? Now, an anemia is when... That is affecting the blood when you have a low um, amount of red blood cells. Or you may have low amount of hemoglobin because of lack of iron. But chicken pox, definitely, we have those small blisters, definitely. Rickets is when the bone is being affected. And what is being affected by the bone is when the bone is either brittle and weak. Ulcer is affecting the stomach particularly. And also is when you produce a lot of stomach acids and it starts to eat away the, the walls of the stomach itself. All right, so this is where we stop for today with this paper. So again, I see you in the next review. Keep safe. Do well.